One of the shortcomings of medicine, at least in the United States, is that doctors are unable to spend enough time with their patients in order to explain the results of their tests. In this video, I am going to be talking about one of the most common tests ordered, known as the Comprehensive Metabolic Panel, or the CMP. Enjoy! <laughs> The first item on the panel is glucose, and this is your blood sugar. Normally this test is ordered in a fasting state, meaning your doctor will have you fast for about eight hours before getting your blood drawn so that they can see where your blood sugar is when you're not eating. Because if you eat something, your blood sugar will remain elevated for a couple hours. So we want to see where it is whenever you're fasting. And if it's over 99, then it's a good sign that you may be pre-diabetic, or if it's even higher in the 150s, 160s, you may have type 2 diabetes. Next on the list here is BUN, which stands for blood urea nitrogen. So in your body, whenever, you're, whenever you eat proteins or whenever proteins in your body break down, one of the waste products is nitrogen. So we can test your blood to see how much of these waste products are present, which would be an indication of whether or not your body is able to get rid of them. And where your body gets rid of this blood urea nitrogen is through the kidneys. And the next several tests on here are related to your kidney function. If BUN is elevated, we could assume that there is some type of blockage in your kidneys or maybe your body is just breaking down too much protein. Next on the list here is creatinine. This is a waste product of metabolism that is normally passed freely through your kidneys. So if we test your blood and we notice that creatinine is elevated in your bloodstream a good indication that your kidneys are not pass, letting this pass through them and that would be a sign of kidney obstruction. The next test is your estimated glomerular filtration rate. This is the rate at which your kidney is able to get rid of creatinine. So if we see an elevated creatinine and a low EGFR we know there's some kind of obstruction going on in the kidneys. And as you can see here, there's two different values for this. And this just has to do with genetic variances between different people. The next one is the BUN creatinine ratio, which is just another test that shows basically what we talked about here. In the next section, we have the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, carbon dioxide, and calcium. Again, the organ in your body that helps to regulate these electrolytes is your kidneys. And so there's two things going on in the kidneys. It's a filter, so we can imagine if the filter is blocked, you're going to have buildup of some things in the blood. But the kidney also does something chemically. It, it concentrates certain electrolytes and removes certain electrolytes based on what the body needs. If any of these electrolytes are off, if just a single one is off and nothing else is wrong up here, then it's probably no cause for concern. But if we have several of these electrolytes off, here's an example of an abnormal test here. You can see sodium is critically low, chloride is high, and we got elevated creatinine. So we know there's something going on uh, with the kidneys. They're not they're not filtering properly, so there's some obstruction, and the, their ability to balance out the electrolytes is hindered. And in this case, it could be due to a cardiovascular issue or a kidney issue. Moving right along, we have the protein category. So we have total protein, so the total amount of protein in your blood, albumin, globulin, and the albumin to globulin ratio. Protein is just what it says. It's the total protein that's in your blood. Albumin is a what we call a carrier protein. Its job is to carry hormones and other chemicals around in your body. And the reason for this is 
if these hormones or other chemicals are not carried, they may react with everything. So they need like a little uber, which is the albumin protein, to hook up to them and kind of shuttle them around the body and bring them where they need to go so that they could react in the appropriate spot. And albumin is highly concentrated in the liver. It's also found in other parts of the body, but mainly comes from the liver. And one of its other roles is to help to balance out your oncotic pressure. So if we have someone who has low albumin or even just low proteins in general, you may have swollen ankles. And the reason for this is your body's ability to balance the fluid inside of the veins versus the fluids in the tissue gets hindered. And what ends up happening is you get an abnormality in the oncotic pressure and that pushes fluid out into the tissues. Globulin is just an umbrella term for all other proteins besides albumin. And if globulin is elevated, maybe you have dehydration, or maybe there is just too much globulin present, there's something that your immune system produces called immunoglobulin. So if we consistently see elevated globulin, we may want to consider doing more blood tests to determine if maybe you have a, a blood disorder such as multiple myeloma. If globulin is low, it could be due to malnutrition, just because you're not getting enough protein could be due to liver disease, kidney disease, or congestive heart failure. And then you got the albumin to globulin ratio. And this is basically what I just said. If, if this ratio is too high, then maybe you have low immunoglobulins or maybe you have a leukemia. If this ratio is low, it could be due to having too much globulin, which like I said before, could be multiple myeloma or some type of autoimmune condition could cause it as well. Another reason why someone might have a low albumin to globulin ratio would be because they may have liver damage or kidney damage. Next is your bilirubin. If this is elevated, this could be due to either, number one, some type of obstruction in the liver or your bile duct, or number two, it could be due to destruction of your red blood cells. When your red blood cells are being destroyed at a, a large enough scale, your bilirubin will be elevated as well. So if bilirubin, if total bilirubin is elevated, your doctor will order additional testing to see where it's coming from. Next are your enzymes. And most of these enzymes, especially this last one here and the ALT, are concentrated in your liver. So in the body, everything is in compartments. Things are either inside of your cells or outside of your cells. So all these enzymes are normally inside of your cells. So if we're getting cell damage, especially cell damage to the liver, your cells will burst open and all these enzymes will spill out into the bloodstream. And when we test your blood, we can see that there's some type of cell damage going on. Alkaline phosphatase, if this is the only one elevated and these two, AST and ALT, aren't elevated, then the tissue damage may be due to bone damage or some other organ. Um, AST, if this one is elevated by itself, it could be liver or it could be some other organ damage. But if ALT is elevated, it's usually due to liver damage. And what these stand for is the AST stands for aspartate aminotransferase, also goes by SGOT, which stands for serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase and ALT stands for alanine aminotransferase and the SGPT stands for serum glutamic pyruvic transaminase. Quite a mouthful. I always just call them AST and ALT. Other docs use these ones. In any case, we'll see these elevated in things like uh, hepatitis. Um, I've had patients with their ALT and AST up in the 300s and I, I did additional testing and found you know they had hepatitis C and these like I said these could also be elevated in other types of tissue damage.
And that's it for the comprehensive metabolic panel. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you don't miss out on more videos like this one. I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.